Hello Internet. So, where I am in ye olde England, I don't know what that was. It is unbearably hot at the moment, and because all the buildings in England are old as hell, hardly anybody has air conditioning, so there is no escape from the heat as I lay naked on my bed like a starfish every night. Just a lovely mental image for you all there. But this unbearable warmth reminded me of a tale that I have never shared with the internet before, of what was definitely the worst 24 hours of my entire life. The time I got sunstroke. So when I was about 15, my family went on a holiday to Morocco. My hair was definitely a bit tragic, but the country was very exotic. Terrifying traffic, lots of peppermint tea and couscous. All there was was couscous. And it was warm. I mean like 50 degrees warm. And on our last night of the holiday, before we went home, I decided I wanted to get some serious tanning time in so that when I went back to school, I would look all travelled and racially ambiguous, which we all know is a really good look for me. So I decided I was going to spend the entire day on a sun lounger by the hotel pool. And I took precautions, bear in mind. I was wearing so much SPF 50, I could have done breaststroke through a volcano if I wanted to, but little did I know, that was not the only precaution I should have taken. Imagine the human body is like a potato. If you heat it lightly from the outside, then the skin will get crispy and change colour, but the inside will be fine. Kinda like tanning. But if you bake it in an oven for hours, the inside will turn to mush. That is what sunstroke is, when your brain literally gets baked inside your head. In a state of total relaxation, having just finished a book with my Zoom MP3 player on my favourite Evanescence playlist, I fell asleep directly under the sun in 50 degree heat for five hours. Bake it in an oven. I didn't really notice anything was wrong that evening. I went out for a meal with my family and Again with the hair, had more couscous, and then came back to the hotel and got into bed. But at the stroke of midnight, began my 24 hour tale of horror. I get up in the darkness to go to the bathroom, and as I'm peeing, another lovely mental image for you there, I black out, I just fall on the floor and wake up to see my mum who ran in from the other room shouting to ask if I was okay. Obviously as a teenager I was more concerned about my mum seeing me naked than my health situation, so I was like, oh my god mum you freak, can you get out? What are you doing? Projectile vomit. Uh oh. I spend the next seven hours leaning over the toilet I nearly decapitated myself on in a maelstrom of dizziness and nausea and cramps with my mum kneeling behind me the whole time, rubbing my back. Just go away, mum! The next morning, we are supposed to go to the airport and get on a flight home. Yeah, like that was gonna happen. I decide to pass on breakfast as I lean against a pillar in the hotel lobby with the entire room spinning like a teacup ride, and the taxi taking my family to the airport arrives. A beautiful silver Mercedes with a beige suede interior that the owner was clearly very proud of maintaining. If it was hard trying not to hydro pump on people in a stationary environment, you can imagine the fun I had trying to contain it in this. I was sat up looking straight at the horizon, spending every ounce of concentration I had trying to keep what remaining bile my body could produce inside me, when suddenly no more than 50 meters from the airport, I go... <clears throat> oh, stop, 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 stop. Mercedes with a beige suede interior. Now, different cultures are known for their varying levels of politeness. The Moroccan people I met were generally very kind and generous, and especially if they were offering some kind of service, such as a taxi driver gave obnoxiously polite customer service. It seemed kind of inappropriate in this particular situation. Oh god, I am literally the worst person alive currently. A white, 15-year-old British tourist with a weird haircut just puked in his Mercedes. And he was apologising. He was like, sorry, sorry, no problem, no problem. I clean, I clean. And I was thinking, why are you sorry for me chunking up the back seat of your car. Are you mad? Mortified, but he seemed so determined to not be bothered, I just focused on not doing it again. Now the thought of a clean, non-moving, open airport seemed like a blissful respite after the car incident. No. We all know how weird the vibe is in an airport. It is the one place you cannot joke around or smile or be weird. You just wait in line, do the thing, and get on the plane. Standing in a security line, 
for two hours when all you want to do is crawl into a ball in the corner of a dark room is very difficult. To onlookers, I might have just seemed a bit drunk, swaying from side to side, but to me, it was like... Whoa. I'm also, I don't have a particular problem with being groped by airport security when I inevitably beep going through the metal detector. I was just thinking, if anybody touches me, I will unleash a tidal storm of stomach acid down their front, and then I will get detained, I will be locked in a room, I will puke in the room, and then I will get probed, and I will puke on whoever probes me. Somehow I managed to make it through the gate, but the worst was yet to come. You don't really think about the freedoms that you have when you're inside your house, where you can walk where you want, or lie where you want, and there's a toilet on demand. I don't think I quite realised how I would have none of these things on a plane. Less of a feat of aeronautical engineering, and more of a steel tube of horror that doesn't just turn corners, but dips, rotates, and turbulences. And so help me God if there was a queue for the toilet. Thankfully it was only a four hour flight, which I spent happily camping one of the cubicles with the doors locked, but then we got the announcement that we would shortly be beginning our descent into London Heathrow. And it really was the beginning of my descent. My descent into hell. Being strapped to a tiny seat in the middle of a busy plane, feeling incredibly nauseous and dizzy, where the slightest poke would have triggered a tsunami of soggy couscous chunks, trying to keep it inside my face as a plane landed was by far the worst moment of my entire life, physically. I think I can say that. I don't know how I managed it, but when the plane touched the ground, I prayed a collective prayer to every religion I could think of, and I'm pretty sure some superheroes as well, just in case, and the clouds above my ordeal began to pass. It was on the car journey home with my family that I finally started to feel better, and for at least three days, I had an incredible appreciation of life and health. Okay, maybe two days. Rest assured, the next holiday I went on, I was like, Hey Dan, are you coming to the beach? Yeah, okay, one second, just let me... <sighs> yeah, okay. Ready for the sun. But dear God, if you learn anything from this video, buy a fucking hat. Seriously though, don't just think about sunburn. Think of the potato. Huh? See? My videos could be educational. Nearly hit myself in the nuts. If this video aroused your interests in any way, then you can click here or on the button down there to subscribe to my channel to be told when I upload a new video, or there to check out my last anecdote that I did in case you missed that. And now I think I am going to take off all my clothes and sit naked in the freezer. Just thought I'd give you another mental image there. Okay, bye!